There are many sections of the financial system that are dangerous. Risky loans, extreme leverage, margin, derivatives, subprime, and the list goes on. Today we are faced with a growing crisis in shadow banking. This is a term which truly says it all. Their business is not scrutinized and yet they continue to expand right in front of our eyes. Even though there was some level of tightening during the aftermath of the financial crisis, shadow banks are able to do business outside of this and enjoy their risky profits. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to talk about shadow banking. This is something that I don't talk about often. I sort of lump all of these financial institutions together because I see it as though if one domino falls, it will take down the rest with it. I'm not necessarily trying to pinpoint which organization is the weakest and then that being the linchpin is going to take everything down. I simply look at it as where there are risks, there is fragility. The fragility brings that chaos after. This is the way I see things, but I wanted to give you a little bit of this insight into shadow banking today, whether that's from Ireland. I know I have many friends in Ireland who are always asking, please do a video on Ireland. So I got some data for you today, but we're going to talk about this all over the world. It has expanded. The Financial Stability Board, the FSB, released its eighth annual global monitoring report on non-bank financial intermediation. In 2018, the FSB announced its decision to change the term, quote, shadow banking with the term non-bank financial intermediation. Doesn't that sound so much better? It's a non-bank. Well, okay, that sounds wonderful. And shadow banking, that's kind of scary. People are going to be worried about what's happening in the shadows. So we'll change the term and then everything will be just fine. It's not a bank, so you don't have to worry about the same regulations relations as a bank and you can simply get away from the stigma of the shadow and this is fantastic. What a good idea. I'm surprised they didn't think of it years ago. With this terminology change, the FSB want to emphasize the forward-looking aspects of the FSB's work to enhance the resilience of the non-bank financial intermediation and clarify the use of the technical terms. So instead of looking at the actual problems, instead of trying to dig into what's happening, they change the term so that you look over there. Don't look over here. Look over there. Let's get into some real data today. We're still going to call it shadow banking, by the way. I'm not going to use that other garbage term. Irish shadow banking dwarves more traditional sectors. This is brand new information from Ireland. You see this happening all the time. Corporations can open up here. There's great corporate tax law. And so you see a lot of money flowing in and out of here because of this easy way to do business, to reduce your taxes and so on. After Luxembourg and the Cayman Islands, Ireland is proportionately the biggest center in the world for financial assets that don't belong to banks or insurance companies. Ireland is one of a handful of countries where the value of assets held by shadow banking sector is bigger than the value of banking or insurance assets. So there's a lot of money in these very small countries and you have to understand how it compares around the world. Yes, obviously much of the money, much of the funds, all of this is in the United States, but you also have a big population, you have a big GDP and so on. But you look at some of these other countries, that are relatively small and you see that some of their banking establishments are gigantic. This happens to be one of them. There's a couple points here in this CNBC article. Shadow banking is now a $52 trillion industry, posing a big risk to the financial system. Remember, I agree with that. However, I'm quoting CNBC. This happens to be a 75% increase since the financial crisis. So they say they're tightening their belts. They say they're not going into more risk. How many times have you heard that before? I've heard it from those in the financial industry. I've heard it from the financial media. I've heard it in the comments sections here. And I generally hear that as being the normal thing that people believe today that the world is safer, the financial system is safer, yet we have shadow 
banking that has expanded 75%. And I do believe, if I remember correctly, that 75% number is from 2017's data. So there's no way that this hasn't continued to grow over this period of time. The industry was at the center of the financial crisis when the subprime mortgage market collapsed. And what happened? Well, it just got worse as time went on. Maybe it's not necessarily subprime houses in the United States, but you have different types of derivatives, different types of de instruments that they can create in order to make things look really good on paper, but really be dangerous and they will eventually blow up. We don't know when that's going to happen. We don't know why that's going to happen, but the risk is there and the pressure is on. Industry officials say that shadow banks still face considerable regulation. Oh, I'm sure they do and can help provide buffers in times of stress. This is what they said back in 2007. If you look at it, even in 2008, as everything was failing, you had everybody from those financial institutions, you had people in the government, the central banks, they were all saying it's contained, it's contained, it's contained. And then you had some very big problems after that. They are not going to tell you the truth. And many people, they just believe whatever they're told. At the bottom, these institutions helped fuel the crisis by providing lending to underqualified borrowers and by financing some of the toxic investment instruments that collapsed when subprime mortgages fell apart. So these are the institutions that we're talking about. I just wanted to make it very clear. They have some more details in here and I wanted to get into it further. The companies face less regulation than traditional banks and thus have been associated with higher levels of risk. In the years since the financial crisis, we're talking about $52 trillion, 75% jump. And my memory was correct because this is through 2017. So in the two year period, I'm sure this could have increased probably towards 100%. So we have potentially doubled the amount of growth that has been experienced here leading up into the financial crisis. There was such an expansion and then things started to get really tight and all of a sudden none of those problems could ever exist anymore. And then, oh no, we find some information about the fact that, hey, it's been growing this whole time. So it all depends. Are you willing to look into the truth or are you going to be somebody who simply refuses to acknowledge it? It's up to you. The U.S. still makes up the biggest part of the sector with 29% or $15 trillion in assets. Though its share of the global pie has fallen, China has seen a particularly strong growth, $8 trillion in assets, 16% of the share. There has been some serious growth going on in China in their financial sector, and a lot of it is off the books. I have covered this before, showing you the data not that long ago, and uh, if you want to check that out, you can always do so. But you need to know what's in this last paragraph right here. This is amazing. Within shadow banking, the biggest growth area has been, check this out, collective investment vehicles. How does that sound? A term that encompasses many bond funds, hedge funds, money markets, and mixed funds. The group has seen assets explode to 130%, 36 trillion dollars. It poses particular danger because of its volatility and susceptibility to runs and is part of the significant risks that DBRS sees from the industry. And of course, nothing will ever be done and we will have a big problem coming out of this at some point. Whether it's the actual cause, the spark, the trigger event, or whether it's sucked into it as a result of whatever is happening at the time. I don't know. I just know that there's a serious issue going on today. A little bit more info about Ireland, just when the central bank thought that it had greater understanding of Ireland's so-called shadow banking, the hole just got bigger. Check it out. Ireland is home to $2.2 trillion worth of global shadow banking assets for a country that relatively, compared to let's say the US, is quite small. This is huge. We're talking about trillions of dollars worth, and this is not new numbers. I know we're going with a few years ago in that. So I know that this is continuously expanding, whether you look at it on the whole, globally, $52 trillion. This is only considering a small portion. This is not the derivatives we're talking about here. This is simply what we're referring to with the shadow banking specifically. This includes 471 billion euro of assets that regulators know very little about. So there is this massive amount of creations that these 
bankers have conjured up and the regulators. Maybe we're talking about the FSB, maybe it's the Federal Reserve, maybe it's the SEC, maybe it's the governments, the central banks, and everybody in between. They don't even know what these products are. They literally cannot figure them out. And so whatever they're told, if they're told they're stable because of this and that, and they have backing here, and they're protected here, well then they simply accept it. There is no understanding of it. That's what happened last time. That's what happened actually, if you look at it, during all of the previous crises. It wasn't understood until after, and then everyone acts so smart, thinking, well, you know, obviously, uh, everyone knew that was gonna happen. It was so obvious. Very few people understood it. If you look at it in every single crisis, very, very few people, including those at the very top, at least from what they say in the media and so on, the Federal Reserve, you'll hear them talking about, you know, this is impossible, how we could have ever faced this. Uh, you know, the solution is, of course, to provide control to us, let us buy up all the assets and nobody will complain about it. As China's $9.1 trillion shadow lending industry cools for the first time in a decade, private corporate defaults are on the rise. Shadow banking, an industry of loosely regulated high yield lending outside of the formal banking sector, has attracted the wrath of the country's financial watchdogs. So they're trying to crack down on it, but of course, in reality, it has expanded. I had done a video about this talking about the off balance sheet numbers that are just staggering. It was at $32 trillion worth the last time if I remember correctly, but then because of the exchange, it actually went to something like 38 or $40 trillion when you actually look at it based on today's uh, currency. And you'll find to yourself that what they tell you and what's actually going on are two completely different things. There's more in here, but I'm running out of time. Just wanted to cover this very quickly. This is just showing you directly from the IMF's website and the vulnerabilities that are currently present, showing you this little snippet of their report from April 10th, 2019, essentially just saying that there are many, many ways that these markets can easily fall apart. But guess what they point to? They're looking at Brexit. They're looking at China. They're looking at things that aren't really that important when they should be focused on things like shadow banking, like the derivatives and the important important things that never get enough attention. But of course, that's why you're here. So I do appreciate that. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a thumbs up, you are supporting this channel. So I really do appreciate that. That's all for this video. You know, if you found it informative, I know that you will find my books, The Money GPS, and my newer release, Global Economic Collapse, even more informative. These have everything that you could possibly want all the way back from the history. You get to look at all of the different charts the diagrams, all the details that other books, quite frankly, do not get into. This is basically the beginning. And if you would simply read these two, you get all the basics that you need to know all the way into the advanced. And that's really why these two books are amazing because it's taught in a very simple manner, yet you get all the complex subjects. Check them out at the link in the description if you want the audiobook that's available at themoneygps.com. If you want to know what China has lurking in the shadows, then you got to watch this video, click on it, and I will see you there.